My name's Eric, Eric LDS, and uh, I want to share my testimony a little bit. Um, this is take one, I might do multiple takes, I don't know. But uh, I was, uh, I grew up LDS My uh, when I was a little kid. When I was three years old, my dad asked me if I wanted to go and bear my testimony with the other little kids. And I said, no. Of course not. Um, I'm three years old, you know. These little kids don't know anything. And uh, there's a lot of truth to that. But uh, it is what it is. Um, uh, sorry. Uh, my uh, dad ended up remarrying, and then uh, the stepmom. You know, we went to a different church called Cornerstone, Cornerstone Fellowship. And they don't mention the word repentance. There's no preaching of repentance. It's just, you know, 2% of the Bible and we're all sinners and that type of message. It's a huge church. They want to keep it big, so... That's kind of their strategy. I've always loved God uh, since I was a little kid. And, uh, anyways, uh, my parents ended up divorcing. And, uh, I started meeting with the missionaries. And at first I was trying to battle with them, you know. I, I was Christian and I didn't really want anything to do with it. And, um, I wasn't very smart at the time. So I was losing these debates and, uh, I ended up meeting with, Sister Poulter and Sister Tiawa. And uh, Sister Poulter especially was on fire for God. And uh, she showed me a verse in Acts. It says something about being baptized. It's no, not something that I knew anything about. I uh, didn't read the Bible that much. But when I read that verse, I just knew I needed to get baptized somewhere. And, uh, you know, this church claimed to have the authority and the, the gift of the Holy Ghost is something I really wanted because I've always really, really liked the Holy Spirit, you know? And, uh, Sister Poulter had so many good one-liners. And she always asked me, do you want to get baptized? Do you want to get baptized? And something that she said was, Satan doesn't want you to get baptized. And that was a really good line because I've always hated Satan and I just knew it was true. There's no way Satan would want me to get baptized. So I read, anyway, I was reading the Book of Mormon, and um, I was doing some research online, and back in 2011, like, the anti-Mormon today is insane, great, all over the place, and it's wild. 
but the anti Mormon in two thousand eleven I mean there was there was some stuff but it really wasn't that much. And anyways it was it wasn't very effective, put it like that. And it made me you know, it was like anyway. Oh, by the way, I just want to macro this because I was going to say something about the South Park episode of, of it's called All About the Mormons, South Park episode. So this is actually part of my testimony. I was at my friend Trevor's house and he's, you know, playing, he's like playing two different video games at the same time and he's watching TV and it's South Park and it's the Mormon episode. And, uh, basically the whole episode, they just make fun of Joseph Smith. Well, I, I didn't even know, I didn't even, I didn't even really know it was Joseph Smith. I didn't really, I, I didn't, I didn't put the pieces together. This is, I was really young at this time, by the way. This is before, this is when my, uh, my dad and my, uh, stepmom were together, right? I just remember they were making fun of this, this prophet, this guy, he's claiming to be a prophet in the show. This cartoon, you know? And it's like, Joseph Smith was called a prophet. Dum, 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 dum. Stuff like that. And my friend is laughing. Laughing, laughing, laughing. But for me... Uh, I, I'm kind of... Engaging with the TV show too. And I'm thinking. I think this guy's a prophet. I think this cartoon. Like the guy that claims to be a prophet. I have the gift of faith. You don't understand. And I just remember. I didn't say it out loud. But I said if I was in that TV show. I, I would follow him. It's pretty funny. It ended up being Joseph Smith. Who's the guy that I'm. You know, following now. <laughs> Crazy. I was even asking him, my friend, to explain the joke because he thought it was so funny, and he was just like, he could, he, he he wasn't really. But anyway, going back to my 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 baptism, I uh, I get the baptismal interview. And he's running through the questions, and uh, he just, (laughs) he saw how much I love God and stuff, and uh, at the end of it, at the end of this interview, I said, do you think I'm ready? And he says, oh, yes, you're ready. You're more than ready. And he, like, he walks out like that. I'm just like, okay. You see, my perception of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, I knew it was different. I knew that most people didn't believe in the Book of Mormon. But... I didn't really know what we believed, really. I just knew some stuff. I just said, oh, yeah, Joseph Smith is a prophet, Book of Mormon is the Word of God, DNC, I didn't really read the DNC at all. Pearl of Great Price didn't read it at all. I didn't even read the whole Book of Mormon. I only read about maybe half, half of it, which is still a lot. I mean, it's 200 pages. And it's like, you get the idea, like, this is a pretty good book, you know. Um, I mean, I haven't, to this day, I haven't even read some of the books in the Old Testament. Um, but anyway, I thought I was joining, like, a super elite. An analogy I would give is, like, there's the Army, there's the Navy, there's the Air Force, and then there's the Marines. I think it's a good good uh, analogy, actually. And I thought the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints was like the Marines. And it was like super Christians, you know? You go to church, everyone's dressed up like it's a wedding. and Everyone's 
everyone's a high priest and stuff. And listen, there's some truth to all of this. But, uh, I think I might be getting ahead of myself a little bit. Um, so I'll just pause, pause on that one. But when I first joined the church, I thought everyone was perfect. And I thought I was the biggest sinner in church. Even though I was living the commandments perfectly. Like, um, I want to say perfectly, I just mean like Genesis chapter 6 verse 9 and, you know, it was like, I was like a Job or a Noah, you know, like, like, uh, little John the Baptist, you know, just as good as a human can be. And all of my thoughts were to the Lord and I was just so innocent and, uh, my baptism was brutal. I was, uh. I was going through spiritual attacks and stuff, but I just remember when I came out of the water, it felt so good. I was baptized by a guy named Stephen Paradise. And, uh, yeah, I had, um, there was so, so much prayer that went into joining the church and like, I asked for signs and I received a sign <laughs> You're not really supposed to do that, but, like, that was only about 10% of the reason why I joined, maybe. I, I don't know. There were so many reasons to join, and, like, my, I remember my friend Zach, he was trying to talk me out of it, and he was doing a really bad job. And he was saying, you know, this religion, they, they have another book. <laughs> you know, why do we need another book? <laughs> so funny. Anyways, I joined the church, and uh, I start learning more about what we believe. And uh, I'm uncomfortable with certain doctrines and stuff. And uh, I just remember hearing something about, like, getting married gets, gets, gets you more heaven and Stuff like that, and oh yeah, then then I find out that we can become gods. That was the, that was like a deal breaker. I had no, like I don't know. I sat through a I sat through a elders quorum of the doc of uh, exaltation, and uh, it just felt like it was so weird. It was like it was quasi Luciferianism. That's what it felt like. I was like, these guys actually think they're going to be gods, you know? This guy comes up, and he's like, where's the purpose of life? And the guy raises his hand, he's like, you know, to get to heaven. He says, is that the purpose of life, to get to heaven? Another guy raises his hand, you know. Purpose of life is to do your best with what you have. He says, so is that the purpose of life, to do your best? And he just kept saying that. He, he would just keep, he wouldn't deny it. He would just like kind of mock it, you know. And then finally the guy in the back, he says, the purpose of life is to reach exaltation. And then the uh, elder squirm leader, who's a guest, he's like, oh, great, great job reading the back of the, the back of the manual. <laughs> Good job reading the back of the manual, Smalls, you know. <laughs> and, uh, and I'm thinking that's that was the worst answer of them all. And there were so many answers given. And I just I was super uncomfortable with that doctrine. And then uh then I started to come across the big anti Mormon doctrine on the internet. I started to find well, I found Sean McCraney first, who was the world's biggest anti-Mormon. He was a bishop in the LDS church and supposedly was born again and then uh, didn't know what to do. And so he uh, went into debt to go to Utah to set up a TV show to bash Mormonism full time for about 10, 12 years, something like that. He was very entertaining. He was smart. He was amazing. And the people would call in and he would just destroy them. 
and he was faith alone, grace alone, Christ alone, you know, by grace, through faith, you know, you just need Christ, you know. And, uh, this one guy called in one time and he's like, I'm in Africa. I'm in Africa right now. And, uh, I agree with everything you're saying, Sean. But I keep asking God if the truth is true. And there's all these just massive, huge manifestations from nature that says, yes, it is true. And Sean McCraney says, really? Like that. And then hangs up. And I'm just like, huh. Sean McCraney must have won 40, 50 in a row of call, phone calls, just destroying people. These Latter-day Saints that were calling in, just destroying them. And then finally one day, this guy calls in and he's like, Hey, Sean, Sean, why aren't you getting any of my emails, Sean? Like that. And Sean McCain is like, yeah, I'm reading them. They're really long. He's like, yeah, why won't you debate me? Let's go. I'm ready. Come on, Sean. Show me the light. Why don't you want to debate? And Sean says, because you would destroy me. Mm. That's what happens when you idolize men. <laughs> they let you down. So, Sean McCready just got destroyed by some Latter-day Saint who called in and emailed them. And he doesn't know all the answers. Sean McCready doesn't know all the answers. So I had to, I don't know what to, what to do. Anyways, there's a lot going on in my testimony. I ended up um, going back to church, leaving, going back to church, leaving, going to church while watching anti Mormon and, uh, I don't want to say specific names of anti-Mormons. I don't want to tell you, I don't want to, you know, give you an idea of where to go. But uh, there are some very powerful anti-Mormons and a lot of them mean well. And a lot of them don't. Um, I was praying for this specific guy and the Lord told me he knows better anyways I was uh I was deceived for a very long time from anti-Mormons. Uh, but, uh, you know, the main anti-Mormon line that's out there is con man theory. That Joseph Smith just made up the Book of Mormon and the whole thing was a con. And uh, I'm, I'm not really buying that. I wasn't really buying that ever. Especially with the chiasmas in the Book of Mormon and Alma and uh, stuff like that. I ended up, I ended up, uh, <clears throat> this is, this hurts to say this, but uh, with all the anti-Mormon that was out there, I, uh, I came up with my own theory. Joseph Smith was demonic. This, this is after after a thousand hours of anti-Mormon. I was like, this could explain it. He was using demons. 
Because then the demons could tell him, because he could re go into the hat, and the demons could feed him the Book of Mormon. And he could just have his first book, Testifies of Christ, perfectly. <laughs> the demons did that, that's fine. <laughs> this, is, this is a crazy theory that I had. And then we have the Pearl of Great Price which introduces other gods. Okay, so... So a lot of people in this situation would say, the devil doesn't want me to make this testimony. So there was, you know, something over there. The reality is, you know, <sighs> my dad was just coming out of his room. So anyway, I have this theory <laughs> that Joseph Smith was demonic. And he's a fal demonic false prophet. And this is why all his prophecies can come to pass. Because the demons are helping him. You know, he sold his soul or whatever. This is a really dark theory, right? <laughs> And I remember um, meeting with one of my bishops, and I'm telling him all these theories too. <laughs> Bishop from a different ward. And uh, I'm not going to edit this out, by the way. You guys are going to have to skip through this. 
not editing anything. <laughs> okay. So. I'm thinking it's demonic, okay? This is my theory. I go outside, I'm praying, and uh, I'm thinking about how to set this up. So, I love the Latter-day Saints, <laughs> and I want to save them as an, as an evangelical Christian who knows that Joseph Smith is a false prophet and stuff. So I'd never get rid of my membership. I'd infiltrate from within. Well, I was outside uh, praying, and I asked God to fire off shooting stars in the in the in the sky. And uh, well, one shooting star means yes; two shooting stars means no. And uh, I have enough faith; it's fine. I have enough faith; this we're good. So I prayed and. You know, let it be so. So I'm walking around. I'm just preaching to myself. And, uh, preaching. And I'm, in my mind, I'm like, <laughs> somehow, somehow behind the pulpit, preaching to Latter-day Saints and stuff. It's funny. This is funny. And, uh, I said, uh, I was talking to God, and I was talking to, uh, you know, I was on the, I think I was on the pulpit here in my mind, and I just remember, uh, oh, I remember saying, I'm not saying the Book of Mormon isn't true. What I'm saying is it's demonic. That's what I said. And I just remember I looked up to a patch of black, you know, blackness in the sky. And, uh, I just said, if there's a shooting star, you know, I know that this Book of Mormon is demonic. 100%. And uh, I was very Mormon fluid at this time because of the, all the anti-Mormon stuff. And when I meet with missionaries, I tend to, you know, go back to the church and stuff. But I just knew if the shooting star comes, I'm going to be 0% Mormon. And I'm going to be 100% sure that the Book of Mormon is demonic. And after about Two seconds, three seconds, it was like one, two, three, I just start getting shivers. And then boom. The shooting star comes right where I was looking. Just and I'm just like I was so happy. And I was so filled with like ecstasy, you know. And I was just like, yes. Um and I said, give us a man who knows the truth. Which is a quote from Stephen Lawson making fun of Joel Osteen. Give us a man who knows the truth. And I was just like, yes. You know. And I went, um, I went home, wrote it down in my uh, testimony journal. And then I called my friend Joel. And I 
I said, uh, I said, Joseph Smith is false private. <laughs> he says, yes, Eric. Yes. Cause he knows, you know, everything I've gone through. And I was, I was praying for friends too. I said, Joseph Smith is a false prophet. And, uh, and I was so happy and I was so sure. And, uh, <sighs> Basically, he was going to two Bible studies. I invited myself to his Bible study. I get there and... Uh, by the way, this has a happy ending if you're LDS. I don't want you guys to think I'm just going to keep bashing it for the rest of the video. This is a very... This is a wild ending. This, I mean, it just, just keeps getting crazier, this story. But uh, I ended up going to his Bible study and... Very righteous guys. It was a repent of your sins Bible study. It wasn't like a free grace Bible study. <laughs> Which I've been to as well. It was like guys trying to live righteously, you know. And I told them, yeah, I just came out of Mormonism, you know, two weeks ago. They're like, wow, you've only been a Christian for two weeks. I'm like, no, I, I was a Christian, you know, before that. You know, he was like, you were a Christian when you joined? I was like, yeah. <laughs> They're like, oh, you know, <laughs> they didn't think that was possible. And uh, so I was so excited. I said, you know, I said, I said, the Book of Mormon is demonic in Jesus' name. <laughs> I'm serious. The Book of Mormon is demonic in Jesus' name. And I said, God told me, you know, 100%. And they're like, really? How do you tell you? You know, and I kind of sh shared the same story that I just did. And I started explaining how it was like my crazy demonic theory and how Joseph Smith was demonic and how, I mean, so, so I, I would say stuff like Satan's main plan is for you to avoid the church, but his backup plan is for you to join the church and get, to get baptized and repent of all your sins. And then because he wants to lead you after other gods, that's the thing, you know, because they believe in multiple gods, you know. And, uh, so that's it. And, and it's a works-based salvation, you know? So it's like mosaic law or whatever, something. But it's mostly for you to be in something. The, the theology is demonic, whatever. I can really understand. I still don't understand all of LDS theology. It's so deep. But, uh, it's not demonic. <laughs> I'll tell you that. Uh, but at this time, I thought it was. And, uh, so I'm telling him, I'm like, yeah, yeah. And uh, I just remember, like, a month into the Bible study, I'm in group text with all these guys. And one of the guys, one of our weaker guys, he says, hey, I just I just started meeting with the Latter-day Saint missionaries. And he said it as a joke. And everyone in the group chat's like, no, no, don't deny Christ. Don't deny Christ, you know? And I was... I just felt like... I felt like it wasn't demonic. I just felt that, you know? And I'm thinking, these missionaries are good, you know? <laughs> but anyways... And everyone's like, where's Eric? Why isn't Eric in the group chat telling him? And I'm like, I don't know. And, uh... He's like, I'm just kidding. And then we, yeah, and then we get to Bible study and he's like, my humor is getting really dark. Oh my goodness. Anyways, uh, there was this other time in, in this Bible study where our leader, he's like, he's like, you know, I've never met a Mormon that I didn't like. He said, he said it like that, like, I've never met a Mormon that I didn't like. And this thought came into my head, by their fruits you shall know them. And, and, but I didn't say that. I was going to say it as a joke. Um, there was this other joke that I said. It, it it wasn't that good of a joke, but it landed, so it was funny. But uh, there was this three-hour theology uh, discussion between a Latter-day Saint and a anti-Mormon. And... Uh, I'm 
I'm not gonna say the joke, actually. I'm just gonna move on. It's not worth it. Uh, it's way important. Way more important things to talk about. It wouldn't really vibe with the this. Well, this whole video is kind of a mess, but 35 minutes. Okay. Um, so I leave this Bible study. The Bible study collapses. At COVID, something, whatever. Um, anyways, I, uh, I'm thinking I, I want to deny Joseph Smith on stage. I'm never going to, I want to get excommunicated. I'm never going to resign my membership and I want to try to convert people and bring people to Christ and plant seeds. So I remember meeting with sisters and, and trying to, you know, I would ask ask them, like, if you knew the church was false, what would your second religion be? And uh, it's such a horrifying question for a Latter-day Saint to hear. But I was, remember, I was, I was concerned for their soul, and I thought they were in a demonic church, and they needed Christ, you know. I remember this sister, she says, she goes, I'd be Methodist. My dad's Methodist. I said, okay. And then I went over to Sister Roberts. And she says, I'd be an atheist. Like that. I'd be an atheist. And I'm thinking, wow. If the church wasn't true, your second pick is atheism. That's insane. So her entire testimony of God basically is dependent on this church. And uh, I just I just testified of Christ to her. I said, "Listen, there's this Jesus of Nazareth guy, and he fulfilled all these prophecies, and he existed. He rose from the dead. He's the Son of God. And you can believe this outside of the church." And she says, "That makes sense to me." Like that. So I was able to convert an atheist into a Christian, or a Latter-day Saint who, you know, I converted her second pick into Christian, basically. And I was like, I was like, wow, that was intense, you know. <laughs> but it's like, this girl was, but obviously was an atheist, and then just was completely consumed by, in my opinion, the best church on earth, the Church of Jesus Christ Latter-day Saints. And that was her whole testimony of God. And I said, listen, you can find God outside the church, you know. You can find Christ outside the church. So I had experiences like that. Uh, but I ended up meeting with these missionaries. Oh, yeah. Um, there was There's some people that I like in the church. And there was a, this girl that I always really liked, kind of as a joke. Because I'm kind of a hyper celibate, gift of singleness type of person, but I love LDS girls. And there was this specific girl <laughs> that I've always loved since fifth grade. And uh, God asked me, He said, uh, So you're Christian, uh, evangelical Christian? And I was like, Yeah. I think Paige is going to hell. And, uh, you know, she's in like a demonic church, you know? And she's like a really righteous girl. And I looked up to God and I said, as a kind of a <laughs> kind of messed up my sense of humor, but I said, uh, well, I said, uh, she sinned. And one sin is enough. Which is <laughs> kind of a very Protestant thing to say, to think. And God didn't like that answer. And then uh, he started showing me like visions of her in hell and me in heaven. And he asked me if I would switch places with her. And I'm just like, yeah, actually, I think I would. You know? And then he started showing me stuff, and I'm just, like, talking to God. And then, um...
than I than I thought I uh, I'm kind of afraid to talk to this girl, but I just had this impression come into my heart. I either need to share her, share with her the gospel, as I understand it, the one that actually works, because apparently the uh, works based salvation, Church of Jesus Christ Latter Day Saints gospel so somehow doesn't work. I think it's Romans eleven six that says the Church of Jesus Christ Latter Day Saints is grace doesn't work, <laughs> and the Catholics don't work. Grace, it's grace, it's no more, it's works, no more grace. Grace doesn't work if you have, if you have works. And the grace, it's gone. The grace is gone. And whatever weird ways they come up with to throw the entire Catholic Church in hell, and all the Mormons are going to hell. Anyways, when you leave the LDS Church, you have to pick some sort of psychotic branch of Christianity. You have to. They're all crazy. to share the gospel with her or pray for her for six months because I believe you could pray you know pray people's salvation you could pray them into heaven pray them out of hell I end up getting a dream and it's Paige and she says I will never be Christian unless you convince me And uh, I was like, okay. So I prayed for her for six months. Every day. Every night. And it was really... There was some like... It's like, my Holy Spirit really loves this girl. I love her so much. My name was Paige Lover. Back in uh, middle school. I sent her like 20 candy grams. It's super cute. But I'm praying for her every night, and I'm act and I actually am dumb enough to think that God is going to send one of our best girls into eternal conscious torment hellfire unless I pray her out. Me, I, I have to pray her out. You know? So I'm praying her out, and. Uh, Pray for her salvation, her life, that she goes all in on Christ, and all this for uh, for about three months, and then uh, I just remember one time I'm at the playground and I'm praying for her, and the Holy Spirit just comes over me, and I just start busting up laughing at the irony of this, because <laughs> she's she's like. She comes from her 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 dad is the president of the, is one of the presidents of the church. She's just like saying, and uh, she's like way more righteous than me, probably closer to God than me. Certainly, people in her family, like it's a very righteous family, you know. And it just dawned on me how ridiculous it was it would be <laughs> for a good God. To condemn the righteous. You know. And. I don't know. Like It was like the Holy Spirit. Was like. Okay I can't. You know. It was funny the first two months. You actually legit praying for her every night. But now it's hilarious. And the Holy Spirit's like busting up laughing. And I could feel it. I could feel the Holy Spirit laughing. And I'm just busting up laughing too. I'm like you're right. This is crazy what I'm doing. Crazy. <laughs> but I kept praying for her anyway. Then I met with the missionaries. And, uh, Elder Richardson, I believe. And some other guy. The other guy was regular. But Elder Richardson, you know, gift of knowledge, which is exactly what I needed at the time. And he was able to kind of, you know, destroy me theologically and rationally, logically, and clear up all the misconceptions, answered all my questions. And of course, I just fell in love with them. I fell in love. I fell in love with the missionaries. They have the Holy Spirit and 
they invite me to go to church and and I'm telling I was like, I'm, I'm trying to stick to it. I'm, I'm telling him. I was like, I had a revelation, you know, <laughs> the Book of Mormon is demonic. And it just, they're just like, no, you know, it's like, no. Oh, another thing that I ended up doing was uh, I took the Book of Mormon. And <laughs> this is funny too. I take the Book of Mormon and I'm walking around my house. And uh, I'm praying, and then I'm flipping to a random section and just reading it. And it's just, and then uh, I was like, oh, this is a book. This is not a book about love. It's a book about obedience, you know. This book is it's just all about works and, you know. <laughs> Sorry. So this is just a book about works. You know, it's a demonic book. They're just trying to get you to repent of your sins. Um, to be saved, you know, um, so, so I was like, so I had, you know, some sort of position against that at the time, and, uh, it's not about repenting of your sins, it's about Christ, this is what a lot of Christians are saying these days, by the way, it's horrible, but, uh, I just remember I flipped to a random point, and I said, it's gonna be about obedience, and at this point, and it was about God's love. And I was just like, oh, and I just, the Holy Spirit came into me and, uh, I just ran to the shower and I'm just like taking a shower and I'm laughing. Anyways, a bunch more stories I can mention later, but let's fast forward to recently, very recently, I met with a couple missionaries. I, uh, talking to him, and, uh, at this point, I'm a little bit more lukewarm again, this is, I mean, this is years, gonna, years later, um, very recently now, and, uh, I'm still investigating, I got my 10-year investigation, this is what I've been doing with my life the last 10 years. And, uh, they said, well, could you pray about it again? <laughs> and, uh, I was like, okay. I was like, I got an idea because God, God's been hearing my prayers. He's been answering me, talking to me in dreams. A lot. So I said, I got an idea. I said, uh, I said, yeah, if the church is true. Then, uh, then I'll get a dream of gold or silver. And if the church is false, then I'll get a dream of dragons, snakes, crocodiles, and crows. Those are all Satan's animals. Or no. I like this perfect. But I told him, I said, uh, if I get some dragons, you're going to have to believe me. <laughs> you know? And they're like, well... There's lots of stories in the Book of Mormon that uh, talk about uh, sign seeking and, uh, you know, Korahor uh, uh, seeketh the sign and uh, this evil generation seeks for a sign and you should just have faith and believe. And I'm just like, I was like, you don't understand. I'm like really close to God. You don't get it. I was like, you know, I know, you know, I know God better than. Both of you kids, you guys are 18 to 26 kids. Like, you don't even, you know. I talk to God in science, I'm good. If I have a dragon, will you believe me? And he says, well, I believe you'll have a dragon. <laughs> Their testimony is pretty strong. And I said, well, I don't care. I, I want to do it for myself. I'll do it. So... I go to bed and I dream and I already, I already know the Book of Mormon is demonic so I'm thinking alright Lord hook it up with a dragon you know I say yeah there's gonna be a dragon you know <laughs> there's gonna be a dragon and uh the first night 
I get a dream about cryptocurrency. Crypto. So I'm interpreting this dream and I'm thinking, cryptocurrency. If you, if you know anything about cryptocurrencies, it's basically uh, gold, silver, and dragons put together. So that's how I interpreted it. And I looked up to God and I'm just like, that makes sense to me. I'm like telling God, I'm like, this is what I've been saying the whole time. It's a good church. It's a great gold. It's great. It's silver. It's good. Dragons. It's evil. It's demonic. It's all of it. At the same time. Everything. It all makes sense now. Crypto. <laughs> <laughs> I end up getting seven, dream, seven more dreams in a row. I knew it. Gold, silver, and dragons combined. Wow. But I kept praying. I said, Lord, I love a dream about gold and silver. I'd really love a dream about dragons. And, uh, I, I think I went three days without a dream, and then I got hit, I kind of out of nowhere, with a dream. And it was this huge roll of quarters. And I'm. the bottom it's a pure pure silver coin at the bottom wow okay so the church is good but it's not great it wasn't gold this is what I said but I did tell the missionaries I said okay you know Got so <laughs> and then uh you know how the sign seeker kinda you know asked for more signs? I kinda did that. I was kind of in awe and I told my friend my friend Joel, the the guy who I told from before, I was like, yeah. So I told him his challenge. I was, gold, I was a gold, silver dragons, and and he's like, oh, he's all expecting a dragon. And I was like, yeah. And then I got a dream of silver. And he's like, yeah. I don't think we should be trusting our dreams over the Bible. And I'm like, yeah. Uh, I'm definitely trusting God over the Bible, Joel. Because the, cause this dream came from God. You know, I've always been a God over the Bible type of guy. Don't get me wrong, the Bible's the word of God, you know. But like, uh, this is pretty direct revelation. <laughs> I end up uh, going to bed and I think, so I, I, so anyways, the second dream, I believe, okay, yeah, the second, this is the second dream, okay, it's gold and silver, <laughs> they're together, and they're shiny, and they're super shiny, this is my dream now, and I remember in my dream, I'm thinking, <laughs> Gold and silver don't shine like that. This is fake. It's fake. I woke up and I said, <laughs> I said, uh, gold and silver. I was, like, I was like, it's fake. And then I said, oh, so the church is fake. And I was kind of kidding because. I think it's pretty obvious that the church is true at this point. 
But I was just making a joke. I was like, so the church is fake. I mean, it was cool and silver and it was shiny. <laughs> so then I prayed and I said, uh, and then, uh, anyways, I keep praying. Um, I get a dream of the gold price going up by 20% in a day. You know what? Um, that was my second dream. Now it's, now I remember, um, this was a couple months ago at the time. I have a I have a video on my channel, I believe, that I talk about it. I'm not showing my face. I'm just walking around. Um, I forget the order of these dreams. But I'm pretty sure the second one was the gold price going up. Um, and then the third one, I believe, was gold and silver. You know, I feel, I feel like Joseph Smith in the first vision right now. He just, he can't, he's like, I've had so many revelations. It's like, this is the, <laughs> but I'm telling you, I talk to God a lot. He talks to me. Long story short, I end up getting six dreams total. And, uh, I just, and, and no dragons, you guys. No crocodiles, and I'm thinking, why? I'm thinking, I was, I was thinking this has to be true. So, when I look back at the shooting star, I have to reinterpret that whole vision to make this make sense. I'm, I'm not saying it's not true. I'm saying it's demonic. And then there was the shooting star, God saying, yes, you're saying it's demonic. And that's how I've reinterpreted my first interpretation. But if I ever become anti-Mormon again, I don't think I can look back at my gold and silver dreams and reinterpret it as... Because I had six of them. I mean, yeah, the, the gold and silver that were fake, yeah, you could do something with that. You could say, oh, yeah, it was fake. But the silver was pure. And the gold price going up, I uh, I couldn't believe it. So I told the missionaries, and they're just like, dang. They didn't really care. But they're just like, they pretended to care. Like, dang, that's crazy. You know, cause it's like, because it's like, wow. It's, you know, wow, a sign seeker got a sign. <laughs> You're amazing. <laughs> Wow, so much faith. It's like, it's like, I didn't think they were very impressed. But they're just like, cool story, bro. Like, and then the, the next group of missionaries were also like, yeah, it's whatever, bro. <laughs> it's like, he said, welcome to the club. We all asked and we all got the answer. Some of us had faith without being an idiot like you. <laughs> I was just like, okay, well. So, I went to church and I testified. I didn't give very many details, but uh, I just said, you know, my name's Eric. I'm I was struggling with my testimony. Missionaries asked for a dream. Um, God told me it was true. I know the church is true. They say the same thing as Jesus Christ. And then I left, you know. And uh, it was amazing. I mean, it was nerve wracking because it's like public speaking, you know. Um, my strategy was like, I was like, <laughs> I don't even want to say that. <laughs> I'll say it because it's kind of funny. I was sitting there and I was like, when do I go up? And then I was thinking, I was like, well, I'll just wait for someone to share their testimony. And if someone shares their testimony really well, then I'll wait. And if someone, if someone shares their testimony very poorly, anyone can follow that. So I'll be, so I'll follow it. Pretty funny. <laughs> this guy goes up and he was like too, he was like hecka far away from the microphone and, you know, you could barely hear him. I was like, okay, I'm going to follow him. I'm going I'm to go after him, you know. Anyway, it's been an hour. That's 
probably as long as we should go here. Um, I want to finish uh, by praying my testimony that the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints is good. That the, uh, that the Book of Mormon is good. I don't understand everything. I still think a lot of the beliefs are, are very weird. Um, I want to make another... <laughs> I also... <laughs> by the way, I left the church for a year and a half because of Heavenly Mother. Um, I said, nope, there's no Heavenly Mother. Um, oh man, maybe I should just drop the Heavenly Mother testimony right now. Oh... So, I know there's a Heavenly Mother. I'll say the quick version. How about that? Maybe I'll say the long version later if somebody wants it on my channel. So, I left the church. I said, Heavenly Mother. I was like, no. There's no Heavenly Mother. It's not in the Bible. Uh, God does not have a wife. Um, I remember uh, Gary. He told me, Heavenly Mother. I ran to my room and... Got up, I ran to the park, and for one hour, I prayed. I said, Lord, you don't have a wife. <laughs> you don't have a wife. I'm so sorry, Lord. You don't have a wife, you know. You don't have a wife. And I just let it all out for one hour straight. I was like, what was I thinking, you know, believe in this religion, and don't have a wife. And, uh, yeah, so this is, I mean, this is whatever, I don't know, six something, seven years ago, I don't know. And, uh, I came back, I had just told Sister Hall and Sister Carter, I can't believe I remember their, I can't believe I remember their names. Sister Hall and Sister Carter, they're a pretty cool duo. Pretty good. And uh, I I just shared my testimony to Joseph Smith the week before. I said my, my testimony is, is super strong. Um, it's as good as it could possibly get. Uh, it's better it's better than yours. You know? I'll never go back on this. And Sister Sister Hall was like smiling and laughing. She's like, sure, sure, Eric, you know. Uh-huh. And then uh, I found out about Heavenly Mother. <laughs> and I lost my testimony of Joseph Smith in the church. And I remember telling him, I said, the God in Jesus that you worship is not the God in Jesus that I believe in. <laughs> and and she, Sister Hall's like, Sister Carter's like, what? And Sister Hall's like, yep. And then um, I just started emptying my heart how some, somehow it's not true. <laughs> Heavenly Mother. Anyways. I told Brother Harwood, I said, no heavenly mother. He says, I, I had a hard one with I had a hard time with that one too. I said, Yeah, it's, it's ridiculous, you know. Heavenly mother. <sighs> Anyways, a year and a half later, I'm in my room. I'm on the computer. I 
I'm running out of energy, but I'm going to try to give this my best. Because it's worth it. This is just a bonus story, by the way. The main story is over. This, this, but... Fine. Spoiler alert. This is the world's strongest Heavenly Mother testimony. So, hype it up. Get hype. on my computer. I'm typing and uh, I'm battling with free gracers. I'm not a free gracer at this point. Um, easy believism. I'm basically telling these guys about how believe in the Greek is pistis and how you need to have the Lord's discipline Revelation 3.19, um, Hebrews 12.6, Proverbs 3.11, Psalm 119.71, and Psalm... Uh, there's, there's another psalm. talks about God's discipline. And I'm telling them how important it is and how you need to have it. Hebrews twelve six, or Hebrews twelve eight. Um, if you be without chastisement, ye are bastards and not sons, illegitimate children. I wrote for hours and hours and hours, and the Lord was pleased with me. I was a. Uh, I was giving my best doctrine to. People I didn't even know, and I just felt the spirit, and I felt so good. Um, I ended up going to sleep, and, uh, said, Lord, can you teach me something in my dreams? get a dream oh. by the way I left the church after this so I'm pretty sure yeah crazy here we go I wake up in the dream or I'm in the dream I'm in a classroom It's being taught by Paul Washer, who was a guy I watched a lot, a lot, a lot. He was my, uh, I was idolizing him. He gave the talk, it was called, um, one of the most viral talks of all time. Uh, what's it called? Uh, Shocking Youth Message. It's a great video. On YouTube. Shocking youth message. And this guy. Uh, made me believe in repentance basically. Anyways. Uh, he's leading the classroom. There's this girl over here. Who. Uh, doesn't understand the lesson. And. Uh. I'm looking at her and I'm like, she doesn't understand the lesson. Immediately, bam, there's eight guys surrounding me. 
and uh, Paul Washer says, read this, and it's the Holy Bible, it comes in, it's my red Holy Bible, and it's Mark 6, verse 41, and it says in the dream, anyone who knows God knows his, and then a screeching as loud as it could possibly be. I'm not going to yell it. But it says, Mother! Mother! Like that. Anyone who knows, anyone who knows God knows his, Mother! All caps. And I knew he was talking about Heavenly Mother. And I'm just like, what? That's in the Bible? Anyone who knows God knows his mother. So I wake up out of the dream and I have this massive Holy Ghost. And I have this huge, what I call the LD, the LDS Holy Ghost is what I called it. It's so messed up. But the real Holy Ghost in my chest. I was like, the LDS Holy Ghost is here. <laughs> huge. It starts coming up to my head like this. And it starts cleaning hundreds and possibly even thousands of hours of anti-Mormon. And it's just cleaning me. I can feel it cleaning it all out. Like flushing it. And at that moment I knew there was around a 50 or so-ish percent chance that there's a heavenly mother. 50-ish percent. <laughs> Comes back down to my chest. So. I had this idea. I just call him Matt. <laughs> Matt is my evangelical Christian friend. He'll tell me how all of this is demonic and satanic and how there's no Heavenly Mother. And then I said, or I could call Gary. Gary's the guy who told me about Heavenly Mother. I get to choose. I can choose which one I call. That's what I'm thinking. Then I got an idea. I'm going to flip a coin. I'm going to cast lots. So I go into my room. Still got the Holy Ghost. I get a better idea. I'm going to go to Mark chapter 6, verse 41. And I'm going to use my pseudo-secular eisegetic revelation powers to see if there's a heavenly mother. But first, I'm going to pray for five minutes. Let's do it. took my red Bible. I prayed for five minutes. It felt like 10 or 15 seconds. It was like, it was so easy to pray in the spirit. I open up the Bible. Mark 641. I'm reading it. It says something, something. There's five loaves of bread. <laughs> it's like, okay. There's five loaves of bread, dude. Five loaves of bread. Semicolon. The two fish he break also. The two fish. 
comes off the page. Three-dimensional, like that. One of the fish represents Heavenly Father. One of the fish represents Heavenly Mother. This thought came into my head. In the same way that In the same way that Jesus can make an unlimited number of fish from two fish, God can make an unlimited number of gods from two gods. <laughs> Ding. <laughs> said, well, I can still leave the Mormon church. I can still leave the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. But not because of the Heavenly Mother. <laughs> wow. And just to show the power of anti-Mormon doctrine, I did leave the church after that experience. <laughs> it's just, it's just, you know, so sad. Proverbs 13, verse 20. He who walketh with the wise will become wise, but the companion of fools will be destroyed. 1 Corinthians 15, 33. Bad company corrupts good morals. Proverbs 27, 17. Iron sharpens iron. So does one man sharpen another. Proverbs 18.24 One who has unreliable friends soon comes to ruin. Proverbs 22.6 Train up a child the way he should go, and when he is old he will not depart from it. First Corinthians 10.20 Have no fellowship with darkness. a guy uh, I'll just say his name Aaron Shafwalf <sighs> he destroyed my testimony 
and uh, 